Hi there. I have a Jupyter Notebook in front of me over here, and I'm looking at a data set that comes out of the Scrub library. In particular, this is a data set that's all about employee salaries, and we are looking at the features that should go into a machine learning model. I also have the labels, which contain the salaries, but I'm ignoring that for now, because I want to talk about these features that seem to have some interesting characteristics. In particular, I want to talk about this employee position title feature. So let's have a look at what's in it. Typically, what we see in here is kind of like text, but it's very short. It's maybe a few words, but definitely not a sentence. But there is some structure in it. We have some descriptive text. That's great. But sometimes we also see that there's this Roman number at the end that could be seen as an indication of seniority. Sometimes an indication of seniority can also be found in the text itself. In the case of master police officer, the term master might indicate some sort of leadership position. But we also see that there can be specialization as well that's indicated as an example down below here. There's a medical doctor, some sign of seniority, and then there's also a speciality being mentioned. This column, when you think about it, contains a lot of information. But it needs to be modeled differently than some of the other columns in this data set. For example, the assignment category that tells us if we are talking about a part-time or a full-time employee. Yes, this also contains text, and yes, that also contains information. But this can pretty much be modeled as a one, zero kind of a feature. You're either full-time or you're not. And there's not a lot of nuance there. Same with this department. But if I think about this employee title, then hopefully you would agree that it might be too blunt to use a one-hot encoding technique to get features out for machine learning here. Given that we are dealing with something that really resembles text, it might be useful for us to investigate some text encoding techniques. And that is something I want to briefly explore in this video. Somewhat generally, you could look at this particular column and say, well, it's kind of like a categorical, but maybe it makes sense to think about this as a dirty categorical. We are technically talking about categories, but it might not make sense to model it as such. So let's talk about a technique from the realm of text processing uh, that might be able to help us out here. So let's consider a few titles. There's senior, software engineer, there's junior, software engineer, and there's junior, software architect. If I were to one-hot encode this, here's what the representation might look like. I would end up with some sort of sparse array where there's one feature for senior software engineer, there's another one for junior software engineer, and another one for junior software architect. And it'd be ones and zeros everywhere. Technically, what we have over here is something that could go to a machine learning model. We have translated something that looks like this into something that's numeric, so that is something that the machine learning model could theoretically handle on our behalf. But if I were now to think about the quality of the generated features, there's a lot that's left to be desired. Just to name one example, suppose that I were to compare this line with this one, and if I were to think about numeric similarity, then hopefully you would agree that these two rows are very, very dissimilar. There's no overlap between the ones and zeros. And if I were to look at the text, I would have a very different vibe. Software, engineer, those words totally overlap. It's just that senior and junior are different. So maybe instead of doing one-hot encoding, we should encode the words instead. And inside a scikit-learn, there's an estimator called the count vectorizer that can totally do that on our behalf. So let's first sketch what the features might look like if we were to go in that direction. We would have the word senior, the word software, engineer, but we would also have the word junior and the word architect. Once again, I'm gonna put zeros and ones down to indicate which rows and columns match. And when I look at this, I might argue that this is a fair bit better. If I were to compare these two words, and if I were to compare these two rows, then I can at least argue that there's some resemblance of the similarity between the language and the numeric representation. So that does feel a fair bit better. However, there is an opportunity for us to add this one 
nice to have to this scheme. And the way we'll get there is by letting go of this notion of words. And here's what I mean by that. Let's have a look at the word engineer. And let's now look at this other word that's not exactly the word engineer. It is engineer, but misspelled. We have an extra E at the end. If you were to compare these two words, would you argue that they are more similar or that they are more dissimilar? The argument here might not hold forever, but I do hope that you agree that if there is a typo where there's just one character that's different, then maybe, for most intents and purposes, those two words ought to be modeled in a similar way. One way to get there is to not encode the entire word, but to use n-grams instead. I'm going to be using three grams as an example here, but basically what that means is that I'm going to look at all the characters, and I'm going to be looking at triplets of them. So that means first I'm going to have a look at ENG, then NGI, and I'm going to be looping over all these features. So that will be ENG, NGI, GIN, INE, NEE, -E, and then EER, because that's where the word stops. Let's not forget about this word, so we're going to add those features in as well. The main thing that's different is that there's this extra token for EEE, -E -E because that's a triplet that this word has, but this word does not. If I were now to just really repeat the exercise by having a look at the sparse representation one more time, then hopefully you can see that we're really just repeating the same effect as what we had before. This word is longer, and it has this one n-gram that this other word does not have, but by and large, you could argue that this numeric representation matches the expectation that we'd have over here as well. The words are really similar, and so is their numeric representation. Note, by the way, that what I'm doing here is I'm just showing this for a single word, but the idea is that we're going to repeat this for all of these words that we might have in the description. There is, however, one extra thing that we can do on top, and that is that we can say that we're going to do this not just for three grams, but also for two grams and for four grams. Maybe the pairs of letters are interesting, and maybe we can also look at these longer windows over the words as well. The big point here is really that we end up with a very wide sparse matrix, and that this is going to be a way to represent these texts that we get in. The whole technique here, by the way, is literally to just not model this as a category, but to more model this as if it were normal text instead. So with this introduction done, let's now look at some code in the notebook. I am back in my Jupyter notebook now, and what I've built is a pipeline that uses the scikit-learn count vectorizer. Note that I've set the analyzer to be character, but keeping word boundaries in mind. This is going to make sure that we're not going to be picking words, but that we're going to be encoding character sequences instead. And also know that I've set the n-gram range over here. By setting it from 2 to 4, I am going to be tracking the 2 grams, 3 grams, and 4 grams. And when I feed this pipeline the employee position title, then I do get quite a wide array out as a consequence. The main reason for this is that I am looking at lots and lots of n-grams over here. If I wanted the output to be less wide, one thing I could do is just turn down the number of n-grams. Removing the 4 grams really does make it a lot smaller, but this is something you might want to benchmark yourself depending on the use case that you're interested in. That said, we do have a pipeline over here now that can generate us a sparse array as output. And as a conclusion to this video, I would like to just poke around with that pipeline just so we can confirm some properties. I have a little script over here that allows me to give some job title that I come up with on the spot. And then I'm going to numerically compare the generated features for this job title with the job titles that I've got on the list defined over here. I just took a random sample of some job titles in the data set but this will allow me to see how similar or dissimilar the sparse arrays for all of these job titles are compared to whatever I feed it in here. So just as a first example, I figured I might go for senior software engineer where software is misspelled, and then we can have a look at the distances below. Looking at this briefly, it does seem like senior engineer is the most similar to 
any other job profession in the list. And that's probably due to the fact that senior and engineer both make an appearance. So it's pretty logical that that's the most similar. Let's now go for just plain senior engineer. And let's remember the number here. The number here was 374. That was the distance that we had. When I use this term, senior engineer, where engineer is misspelled with an extra E, then I see that there's a distance of one compared to senior engineer spelled correctly. That distance of one is there because of that misspelling. There's one token that's different, and that one token causes this Euclidean distance of one to make an appearance. A thing that's also interesting to observe at this point is that because the word senior makes an appearance here, all the job titles that have the word senior in it tend to be more similar than job titles that don't. So the effect that I explained before can definitely be seen here. These distance measures really do say something about the overlap as far as these substrings in the text goes, and it could be useful for downstream modeling. That said, I also want to immediately admit that this approach is not perfect. Suppose that I were to give the term senior software architect. Well, then the term senior architect over here is the most similar compared to everything that we've seen before. But we have to be a bit careful now with the meaning of the word architect. Are we talking about buildings or are we talking about software? There's a little bit of context missing and that bit of meaning, that bit of context, isn't captured by just looking at these raw characters. So even though the features that we're getting out over here can be very useful for a bunch of tasks, we should of course also remember that this is still a technique that doesn't always apply to reality. There's also another downside of this approach, but that will be the topic of the next video.